the things that we're anxious to do at OT Archives is to find ways to take our collections out of the film cans, off the shelves we have, and to make them available to the public. And with the John F. Kennedy exhibition, we've gone back and taken our radio archives, TV archives, photographs and documents, and we're going to put them all online so that people can go and experience the Kennedy visit as it was recorded by RTE in 1963. RTE has a huge range of documents relating to the visit of John F. Kennedy and uh, these are uh, contained within our moving image, our television broadcasts from the time, our audio, but also our documents and stills. We're engaged in a project to develop and open up our archives and this represented a fantastic opportunity for us to really showcase what's inside the archives. We're also collaborating with the National Library. There will be a talk hosted by our own Ryan Topperty next month um, about the history of the coverage itself. Um, and also um, the US Embassy have a fantastic uh, website called the JFK Homecoming and we're collaborating and sharing content from our exhibition there with, with, with that site and also of course that's encouraging um, members of the public who remember the visit to also share their memories. Well it's hard for people to remember nowadays when multi-channel land we, we get our media in so many different ways that in 1963 we had one television station, one radio station and when RTE heard that President Kennedy was going to come to Ireland for four days and that they were going to have to cover the visit this was an enormous undertaking and they had to enlist outside help. They wouldn't have had the equipment or the necessary expertise to do that. But they still managed to put a team together with 24 cameras, they radio people across the, the whole coverage. Basically, from the moment the Kennedy plane touched down on, on June the 26th at Dublin Airport, Orty covered all of his public engagements on radio and television right up till he departed from Shannon four days later. I was very fortunate just to be in uh, at, at the beginning of the organization, uh, two weeks after we went on the air. But it was about a year after we were on the air that President Kennedy came. And uh, it was a huge excitement and a, a tremendous challenge for everybody in the organization. When uh, my great-grandfather left here to become a uh, Cooper in East Boston, he carried uh, nothing with him except two things, a strong religious faith and a strong uh, desire for liberty. And I'm glad to say, and I'm glad to say that all of his great-grandchildren have valued that inheritance. When he gave that speech in New Ross, I was one meter away from him, filming him from one meter away and I was no uh, difficulty, nobody approached me, nobody got me out of there. So I filmed him giving that speech where he gave that great line saying, well, if my people hadn't gone to the new world, I'd probably be working over there at the Albatross the factory. Albatross company. <laughs> and it brought the house down. People really loved that because he was identifying with them in a, in a wonderful way. One of my favorite clips uh, available in, in the RT archive is Dungan'stown. Dungan'stown is the little uh, townland hamlet in Wexford where he went to meet uh, Mary Ryan, his nearest living relative. And as soon as she met him coming in, she gave him a, slapped a massive kiss on his cheek and said, welcome. Now you don't go around kissing the President of the United States and you don't do it in a yard in Wexford. So if you watch the footage, he comes in and there's one little bit, and this was really important because it was one of my, one of my favorite stories, and I only got it because I was listening to the archive really closely. And there's a cake, which you can't quite see, but you know that there's, his face is, 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 is on the icing. And he says to Mrs. Ryan, shall I cut the cake, Mrs. Ryan? And she said, yeah, go on, cut, uh, cut. And she fizzles off, cut, cut, and be listening again, close, cut. And he looks at the cake and says, cut myself. And he starts cutting himself in the cake. And, and he's chuckling away going, geez, what is happening here? I'm in a yard in Wexford cutting myself in a cake. And you, you, again, you could only see it on the archive. One of the things that strikes you when you look back through the footage or you listen to the radio coverage of the, is the sheer excitement that was set up by the, this visit of an American president in Ireland for four days. Crowds turned out in enormous numbers everywhere Kennedy went. And you can even notice Kennedy himself get more relaxed as the thing goes on. Um, people are allowed right up beside him. There's a lovely piece of footage in Wexford where he actually beckons people to come towards him. Yeah, yeah, they're a standoffish little bit and he beckons them and they come towards him. 
So after the Kennedy visit, uh, the White House contacted RTE, our Director General at the time, Kevin McCourt, and they requested uh, footage of the Army cadets. They said the President had been so impressed with the cadets, he would love to have some record of them in their uh, military activities, uh, these guards of honour and so on, uh, particularly at Arbor Hill. The Irish military, the cadets, did what's called the Queen Anne drill, and it's the guns and it's the movement. And Kennedy was absolutely mesmerised by this. And when he was at home in the White House, he would regularly say, can I see that again, that footage, the footage that we can all see now on, on the archive. The other poignant thing was that uh, after the assassination of the president, there was a message that came from the White House requesting the cadets to come and be part of the guard of honor at the burial of the president. Within five months of him sitting uh, at Arbor Hill watching them doing that drill, the army cadets were by his graveside in November doing the drill again as they lowered his coffin into the ground. It was an extraordinary thing, a very, very emotional thing. And, um, but what a way to say goodbye uh, to a fallen hero.